So I've managed to get to the vault, but the problem is I have no idea how to actually open it. And we have a computer over here who is telling me to enter a password, and I have absolutely no idea. But since you're here, I'm actually just going to take a shot in the dark. Maybe we can get lucky. MC for Minecraft. Let's give this a try. Let's hit enter. It says access denied. Oh, oh. Alright, that is just, that is just great. And it looks like he dropped this over here. Let's see what that is. Notch. Well, that's convenient. That, that might actually be it. Let's give that a try. Enter password notch N O T C and of course H. Now let's see if that one works. Yes, finally. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for a really long time, to be honest. Yes. Well, hello everybody. My name is Alex Drops, and as you just saw, I have something really cool for you today. It is what I am calling the Telrock keyboard. And essentially what the Telrock keyboard is, as I'm sure you can guess, is a keyboard within the chat bar, and it allows you to type things in and have a command block actually read them. So I'm going to come outside out of the prop room, and essentially this is the entire keyboard right here. This is all the command block and redstone that's going on. But before I get to how it works and why it works, I'm going to explain why this is necessary at all. So the problem I faced was I wanted a way for the user on a map to be able to type in a command through chat. And of course this is impossible if I typed in notch like I did earlier. It's not going to do anything, it's just going to say notch. The only way I can actually get something to happen is if I typed in like a set block or something like that. There's no way to actually tell it what you wanted to tell it. And so I kind of related this back to coding because you really know what you want to happen but the machine doesn't understand your language, you have to put it in a way that it can understand it. And the way that Minecraft can understand it is through command blocks and specifically this, uh, the scoreboard command. So that is what I have done for this project. I've actually used the scoreboard command to store information from a keyboard. But before I get into all the boring stuff, I kind of want to explain a few more cool things about this. Um, as I showed you, you can do passwords with this. You can just type in custom passwords, and that'd be great for a custom map. And if I just go into my inventory here and get a blank map, you can actually activate this keyboard from anywhere in the world. If I were to just come over here and let's just assume that I am in a creative world just walking around, I can actually do custom commands. So if I just right click on my map, I'm going to get my keyboard. And I'll be honest, my command isn't very creative. I just made the jump command. And if I press J, U, M, P, and I press enter, I'm actually going to get a super high jump. Now, of course, this isn't too great. You can, of course, just type slash effect 8 and give yourself a jump boost. But the point is that I can make a custom event happen just by typing. And now, one extremely useful thing I can think of, but I didn't have the willpower to actually make it, was there is, I think, Squirt Dude actually made something where you can kill entities using a single um, output. So I could just type in butcher or something like that and it would just destroy all the entities in the world which would be really cool because that of course is not a normal command but I could use it using this keyboard so this would allow me to be anywhere in the world and have a bunch of custom commands that would just make my life easier as far as remembering the built-in commands so now we're gonna get into what is actually going on here so as I explained this uses the scoreboard command and what I've gone ahead and did was I created 10 custom scoreboard objectives. Now these 10 objectives are all relative to the amount of characters that you can type in. I have created 10, but I could add 20, I could add 30, I could add a lot if I wanted to. But the point is that I have 10 right now and those are the ones that I'm going to be testing for. So whenever I go ahead, let me activate it real quick. Whenever I have my keyboard set up, 
whenever I press A, it's going to give me a score for character 1. It's CHR1. That is my first objective. And so if I press A, it's going to give me a custom score. If I press 7, it's going to give me a custom score. If I press M, it's going to give me a custom score. And so by giving myself custom scores for car 1, car 2, car 3, car 4, car 5, I can actually test for exact f words. And that's what I've done for here. Right here it says test 4. I'm testing for a character 1 score of 23, a character 2 score of 24, a character 3 score of 29, and a character 4 score of 12. Now, what do those numbers mean? Well, I have a handy dandy book with me. And I've basically, very simply, assigned a value to every single character. So as you can see, A is 10, H is 17, space is 36, and so forth. So the reason I did this is because I needed a numerical value, value for all of the values in this keyboard. So we know how this works now, but I kind of want to explain why it works. And so in this block of command blocks, these first four in the front are all tell raw commands. And these are the ones that actually make the keyboard appear. They are giant tell raw commands, each with extra letters and such. And they all have a click event, which runs a command, which is actually a set block command. So what happens is I'll place a block here. It'll set out a keyboard. And whenever I press A, for example, and I actually just do zero, zero is easier. If I were to press zero, it's going to set the block right here to zero. Now when I set the block right there to zero, it's going to give me a character one score of zero. And it's also going to do something really cool, and I'm sure you'll notice. A bunch of random crap just happened. And now if you notice, all of these say character two now. All of them are completely different. So what just happened whenever I press 0, it gives me a character 1 score, and it activates this command block, which completely spawns a new structure here. This is using a really cool filter that spawns an entire structure from a single command block using a bunch of minecart with command blocks, and I will link that in the description. And so now that I have a character 2 thing set up, if I were to click maybe 1, or it's not there anymore, but if I clicked 1, it's going to set this block, my character 2 score to 1. It's going to destroy everything, and now it's all ready for character 3 stuff. And so that's how I assign independent values to all 10 of my characters. Now, quite simply, the enter and cancel commands, they are very simple as well. The enter command is going to, first of all, reset all of these back to character 1. And it's also going to give the output that we want. So in my case, my output is a test for command. And I'm testing for a specific phrase. And then I have, like, access granted and all that fun stuff. My cancel command is pretty similar to, except it just sets all my scores to 0. All this stuff down here is not nearly as important as all this does do a few cool things. All of these are basically blank tell raws. And so this is just so it looks a little nicer and I don't have a bunch of uh, set block things everywhere. And all these really do is reset the system. And you can find out exactly what all these little set blocks do if you download the map. I also do want to point out really quick that I do plan on redoing this entire structure. Right now all of my values or positions are absolute. As you can see, let me find a good example. Right here, I have a Z, a Y coordinate, and I have really obscure numbers, so you couldn't download this and put it in your world. You need to be at the exact coordinates. And if I used relative coordinates instead, you'd be able to actually use this. So I plan on redoing that. And let me just show you one more time what happens whenever I click cancel. It's going to spawn a bunch of minecarts, and they'll get deleted by lava. And something, of course, went wrong. I don't know how, but... <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much everything. And I hope you enjoy this. And if you have some cool ideas for how you can make really cool, maybe, passwords, or like I showed, custom commands. And I'm sure there's plenty of other things you can do out there with using this device. So I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. But before I leave, I also want to thank one more filter that I used. I don't want to forget about it. It saved me probably an hour or so when I think about it. It is the replace text filter. 
and I'll link the creator of it in the description, but it basically allows you to go into the filter and say, I want to replace car 1 with car 3, and so I didn't have to change all of these at once, I could just use a filter on it. And I just wanted to throw that out there because that helped a lot. And thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any cool ideas for this, let me know, and I'll see you next time.